In this section, we're going to take a look at the most common index lookup operations. These are the operations where Oracle is traversing the B-tree structure of an index to find the row IDs of the rows that match a condition specified in your WHERE clause or in a JOIN condition. These operations tend to be very efficient, so we want to favor these operations where possible. The most common index operation is an index range scan. You will see an index range scan used whenever Oracle is using a non-unique index to perform an index lookup operation. You will also see this operation used if you are accessing a range of data on a unique index, either by using the between keyword or greater than and less than operators to specify the range of the data in your WHERE clause. The range scan in the name indicates that this operation can and most often will match multiple rows. For example, in this slide, Querying the table using the last name of Nelson will result in multiple rows being returned. What this means is that this operation will return multiple row IDs, each one pointing to a row of data that matches the index lookup operation. To perform this operation, Oracle is going to traverse the B-tree structure of the index, working its way down to the leaf nodes at the bottom of the index. Inside of the leaf nodes, there will be the index key values, and for each index key, a row ID that points to the location where the corresponding data is found. Having the row IDs, Oracle can then use a table access by row ID operation to access the data it needs, and as we've just seen in the prior section, this is a very efficient operation. The data in the leaf nodes of the index, which are these nodes at the bottom of the index, is stored in sorted order. So once Oracle is at the leaf block level, it can traverse the index horizontally to scan for any data that it needs. If you think about an index on a date column, which is the example shown here, you might have a query which is specifying a date time range. What Oracle will do is traverse the index vertically to find the leaf node with the first date in the range, and then scan through the leaf node sequentially until it finds the last date time in the date range. Index operations like this are very efficient, because this B-tree structure is usually only three or perhaps four nodes tall. In this way, Oracle only has to read a couple of blocks that contain these branch nodes at the top and perform a couple of comparisons, and then Oracle's already at the leaf node level, where it can quickly scan through the data in order to find the rows of interest. Consequently, anytime you have a table of any size, you want to make sure that your SQL statement is using an index. By using an index, Oracle will only need to read a few blocks to find the appropriate keys in the index, and then read only the blocks it needs from the table, which again is a relatively small number. By using an index, Oracle is minimizing both the amount of data that it may need to read from disk and the amount of data it has to process. The result is a SQL statement that will execute very quickly in terms of response time and be very efficient in using system resources. If you have a unique index on your table and you specify the value that you need in your WHERE clause, Oracle will perform an index unique scan. Once again, Oracle will traverse the B-tree structure of the index, but in this case, Oracle knows because the index is unique it is only looking for a single index key and therefore a single row ID. Once Oracle locates this information, it can go ahead and perform a table access by row ID. If you ever query data in a table based on the primary key, this is the operation that Oracle will use, and this operation is why primary key queries are so fast. Traversing the index structure is typically only three or four I.O. operations, and then there will be a single I.O. operation to get the actual row data from the table so Oracle is able to locate the row with a minimum amount of effort. Earlier in this module, we saw the term access predicate used with index operations in an execution plan. Whenever an index range scan or an index unique scan is used, you will have an access predicate associated with these operations. When Oracle is using an access predicate, it is using a condition in the WHERE clause or a JOIN condition in order to traverse the index and then only read the blocks it needs to. In situations where multiple rows could be returned, like a non-unique index or a WHERE clause for a range of values, the access predicate also determines the start and stop points of what blocks Oracle has to read in the index. This is why an index operation is so surgical, because Oracle is reading and processing a minimum amount of information. Rather than the filtering of data going on after data has been read, the filter is being applied up front. This not only saves I.O. operations, both logical and physical I.O., but also saves CPU, because Oracle has many fewer rows to examine. Index operations can also have filter predicates applied. 
Just like in table operations, filter predicates are applied after the data is read from the database object, in this case the index. Since filter predicates are applied after data is read, they do not reduce the amount of data that must be read for the operation. However, a filter predicate on an index operation will only apply to the data read in that index operation. So if an index operation contains both an access and a filter predicate, the access predicate will first be applied to only return a small subset of the index values that match the access predicate, and then the filter predicate will run only on this subset of values, not on every value in the index.